Uh, let's bring in our man Kyle Matson, who has not taken off uh, his D'Lo and KC Blue World Order L hoodie. I love it. Literally never taken it off. I, I love it. That, that it, it's it's like it's it, one. It's a great hoodie. Uh, it's super comfortable, yeah. but it's a way for us to be to be close. And I know that's important to you. It's the most important thing in my daily life. Yeah. Oh, is man. how do I wake up and I say how do I be close to D'Lo and KC today? <laughs> and then the hoodie is sitting there hanging up in the in the shrine that i have built for you guys and i gotta <laughs> take it down and throw it on and yep. i go about my day that's why you're to go kyle that's why you're to go thanks man we'll, we'll get it. you we'll get you one in the the, the 49ers lux colors that are about yeah, to drop yeah, well, yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll, we'll 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 get you that and we'll get some bottles to spice up the the, the little back setup of your 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 camera there we'll, we'll we'll get you some nice bottles to put back there so i have i have two you do um <laughs> And I was gonna put them back there as a bit, but you couldn't like see them regardless of how I was set up, so I didn't do it. That's the beauty with the Vylon and the uh, the Bumbo Cream is you could put them behind you and they could be empty. That's a great point. Like, that's 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 solid. There are some bottles behind me that are purely decorative. <laughs> <laughs> Most of them are not, but some of them are are very much decorative. Uh, as we welcome the Prince of Niners Wire. Uh, our friend Kyle Matson, of course, he's the host of Candlestick Chronicles, uh, as well as the work he does over at 95.7 The Game in San Francisco. So, uh, Odell going to play for the 49ers on Sunday or no? Oh. Or no? <laughs> <laughs> well, considering that he his his waiver claim he hasn't be been waived yet <laughs> until, until Monday. Yeah. Uh, so so that process won't take place until next week. Um, it's a definite maybe. It's a hard maybe. There we go. Um, it's certainly a possibility, but the Niners are 12th in the waiver order and I don't know if he'll fall that far. Mm -hmm. and Do you think he's going to be claimed know. off waivers? It should be. Yes. Yes. Oh, I think the, so. The key to that too, Kyle is, is, isn't, um, isn't Cleveland doing something with the contract that they turn it into a signing both because with the waivers, tell me if I'm wrong, I could be, could be off here, but, um, doesn't, doesn't it mean when you pick them off waivers you got to pick up that contract yeah and cleveland is basically making it where that's not an issue so it would basically be like a vet minimum yeah that that's kind of what i saw so the the financial thing isn't an issue it's just so they the got the von of, miller treatment like the, like the browns are just paying the contract like the the the, the broncos did with von miller yeah, yeah. They, they said they're turning it into like a sign he's room. going to the rams what are we talking about everybody goes to the rams yeah, they'll, the Rams up to last or like first in the waiver wire. That's how they do things for the Rams. No okay. extra okay. draft picks, no cap um, restrictions, and they'll move them up to the top of the list in the waiver wire. It makes me wonder why not every team operates like basically the the Saints do the same thing. It's why the Saints can operate with like 19 cents in cap space because <laughs> they just perpetually kick the can down the road, like eventually the cap's going to keep going up and you can just keep kicking the can down the road. And I don't know why more teams like it puts you in a bad spot if a pandemic hits and the <laughs> cap goes down, <laughs> but, <laughs> but um, you know, sans pandemic, I think it's a pretty good way to operate. And I don't know why more teams don't do mm -hmm. that, but uh, the sneaky team, a, I think the Raiders would be in on him uh, and B, like, it wouldn't shock me if he winds up in like Kansas city. Mm. Um, but again, I don't, I don't think he falls that far in the waiver order. I think there'll be a bunch mm -hmm. of claims on him. I don't know if he's an elite first team, all pro receiver anymore, but he's better than most teams, second best receivers. So he so, really has a fascinating career. Sorry, Casey. Go ahead. I was just saying, I'm thinking here, if we're playing chess, we might want to oh. lose on Sunday. <laughs> <laughs> we might want to lose. I don't think that's the oh, move. No. I don't think you want to do that. <laughs> bad take, Kenny. For three years. Bad, bad, bad take, Kenny. <laughs> if no, here's here's so here's here's my big thing with 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 Beckham is put aside you know whatever whatever weird stuff he had happen in in New York and 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 whatever he had happen in Cleveland that made that made Cleveland no longer a fan, but um for for like if brandon Ayuk hadn't just had a, a pretty nice game in chicago and the niners were still kind of searching for that number two receiver then i think they would be more inclined to go really make a push for him and and really try and acquire him um 
but the fact that Brandon Ayuk kind of came on last game and we saw what he can do in his rookie season and we see Debo Samuel have this breakout year where they can be a legit one two a receiver tandem, I think the need for a player like Odell Beckham Jr. goes down some. And so the reward doesn't outweigh the risk. Like is Odell Beckham Sr. the first time Jimmy Garoppolo uh, doesn't throw it to a wide open Odell 30 yards down the field hmm. is Odell Beckham Sr. going to jump on YouTube and making videos about it. Like, is that just going to become another talking point around the 49ers quarterback situation? that's already kind of tenuous. Uh, I think that's something that they'll factor in. And I don't know if the reward of, Odell Beckham Jr. at this point of his career would be worth that given George Kittle's coming back. Brandon Ayuk looks to be figuring things out, and Debo Samuel is one of the two or three best receivers in the league this year. I mean, he'll never go and, and take a chance on his high-end talent, man. That just doesn't seem to be their philosophy, right? They like everybody they, they, by the wayside. Yeah, they, they just... Because Kyle Shanahan's the star of the show. Come on now. It feels like... no. It feels more like... They're so concerned, and this is just kind of how it feels. I don't, I don't know anybody in the front office where, where I would know this for sure. But just the way they operate, it seems like they are more concerned with, okay, how are we going to be able to maneuver in three years? When it's like, dude, look at the landscape of the AFC and the NFC this year. Mm -hmm. Like, there's not. You can win it this year. Like they, they can. Mm -hmm. If they go got if they go and get Yvon Miller or an Odell Beckham mm -hmm. and they they bolster their roster, it's like the, the 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 Buccaneers aren't unbeatable, the the Packers aren't unbeatable, the Rams aren't unbeatable. Um, I just I don't know. They never seem to just go for it, go all in, for example, the way we see the Rams do seemingly every year, the way Tampa Bay did with Tom Brady. They just don't they don't operate that way. Mm -hmm. And I, I think that's a, a an organizational philosophy that's gonna have to change. If they're going to keep up with these teams that are are building contenders in an off season, mm -hmm. oh. are you more confident in in the 49ers this week than you were last week? Yes, yes. Because you really did not like them prior to that game versus Chicago. Yeah, because there was no reason to believe that they would go in and execute at the level that they executed. Yeah. But the fact that they went into Chicago and did it, it's like okay, it's still there. Like the Jimmy Garoppolo, seventeen of twenty eight. Uh, for 300 plus yards is still there. Um, and more than that, more than just the statistical production, my cats are going insane right now. Um, more than just the statistical production. How many cats do you have? Two. Just two. Oh, there. okay. They're yeah, just yeah. chasing each other around. We're about to say, um, we're fighting each other? Yeah, kind of. They're just, they're playing. It's fine. Um, but more than just the statistical production with Garoppolo, we saw him connect on a deep shot, like a legit deep shot to Debo Samuel where he hit a receiver in the chest 50 yards down the field. Yeah. Like, that's new. That's a that's a good thing. That was we the saw him, I've ever seen him make. We saw him scramble out to his right, directing traffic, and then hitting Brandon Ayuk for like a 20-plus yard gain on a, on a play that I feel like a year ago goes for a sack. And mm. if he's going to make plays like that and look more like the 2017 Jimmy Garoppolo, the one five games in a row, it's like, okay, now they've got... It's not a coincidence that Elijah Mitchell had a huge game on the same day that Garoppolo kind of figured it out passing-wise. Um, it wasn't, you know, all this outside the numbers passing. I think he should have had a touchdown pass to Debo Samuel after the 50-yard completion mm -hmm. where Samuel was open. He just missed an out route because that's what yeah. he does. But uh, how decisive he was, um, he was accurate down the field. Uh, he was moving around outside the pocket and making throws that's all really encouraging stuff for their offense. So if he's going to continue doing that, I think he can be closer to the 2019 Jimmy Garoppolo that they need. If they're, if they're going to contend even for a playoff spot. Mm -hmm. um, but there's always a possibility that he goes out against Arizona and kind of reverts back to uh, not being very aggressive and being indecisive and inaccurate. And uh, we'll see, but the fact that it's still there, I think was a good sign. I'm not sold on Jimmy uh, as of yet. I like I loved what I saw him on Sunday, obviously, but I I just I don't have a belief that he can do that consistently as of yet. You know what I mean? Sure. But one thing that I'll say about Jimmy that at first I was upset about it's like Sour Patch Kids. First it was first are sour, then they're sweet, right? So so I was upset sure. about this play. Tell me if you saw this, if you remember this play. It was sometime in the second quarter. 
where Jimmy drops back to pass and the ball gets batted down. And Jimmy stands there and he starts yelling at the receiver for probably not running the right route or something like that. And I sat there, I was like, Jimmy, why the hell are you mad at him? Because you got the ball batted down, right? And I just, I, I was like, that's ridiculous. But as the game went along, there was a certain edge that Jimmy Garoppolo played with. Like he uh-huh. was intense out mm-hmm. there. And once again, I was perplexed at first. And as I saw more and more of that intensity, it's like, I like this from Jimmy. I like yeah. this is what has been missing. The passiveness and everything that's gone on with him for so long. It was out the window on Sunday. If that's the Jimmy Garoppolo that you're getting for the rest of the year or however long he plays, Mm -hmm. I would like to see that. I am intrigued by that. But um, did you see the same thing from him? Was there a different level of intensity, it seemed like, from Jimmy on Sunday? Yeah, Yeah, definitely. And I think you saw it on the broken play that was supposed to be the handoff to Debo, Mm -hmm. but they broke the timing and he ran it in. Like He didn't panic and just try and get the ball. He took that initiative on himself. I'm going to score here. I know the play that was called. I know where the blocking's going. I'm going to follow that blocking. Like that's a confident quarterback that's that has ownership of the offense. And I think you're absolutely right. It didn't feel like he had that. And as far as you know, yelling at a receiver on a ball that got batted down. My theme of the week, <laughs> as I've been preparing for for my show and 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 doing some stuff around the house, has been about process over results. Mm. And I think that's a classic case of. The ball got batted down. That's not on the receiver. But if the receiver was in the wrong spot, that still needs mm-hmm. to get corrected. Right. Because if the ball doesn't get batted down and the receiver's not in the right spot, they have an incompletion anyways or an interception in the worst case. So um, you love you love to see that because as the that's been the big kind of... My biggest question is, how do you, if you're Jimmy Garoppolo, take ownership of a team when the team made it abundantly clear in March, like, this is not your team anymore, man. Like it's going to be for this year. Like you can have it, but it's on, it's on loan. Like you're going to have to give it back next year. Like this is it. (laughs) But I think, I think, um, I think last week was a, a very good step in the right direction for, Hey, he does have ownership of this team and he can, um, put together a really nice performance on the road. So I'm with you though. I need to see it a few games in a row because the inconsistency has always been his biggest problem. Mm-hmm. It's 49ers Friday brought to you by McQueen in the Violet Fog, the smoothest gin in the world, handcrafted in Brazil. Kyle Matson mm-hmm. talking 49ers football with us here on d and KC. Uh, you brought up Elijah Mitchell and the impact that he had on Jimmy Garoppolo's game, or at least that you didn't feel uh, that the fact Elijah Mitchell had a big game, Jimmy Garoppolo had a, had a big game that wasn't exactly an accident. Uh, but with Elijah Mitchell, <laughs> Trey Sermon, uh, uh, Raheem Mostert is Elijah Mitchell the guy like moving forward? Is he the the running back of the future uh, for the for the San Francisco 49ers? I don't know about the future, but um, I can't even guarantee we'll be alive on Sunday. To... Thank you, thank you, Kyle. <laughs> um, <laughs> Kyle, it works. Thank you, yeah, Kyle. Yeah, I think uh, MLK no. said that. If I'm not mistaken, that was a great yeah, MLK the great quote. MLK said, um, "Jeez, boy." Um, <laughs> Can I just real quick? I am so I am so glad that the 49ers drafted Alex Smith first overall in the 2005 NFL draft. Well, that's a take. Just, just what a what a pick passing on Aaron Rodgers. You love to see uh the 49ers having the foresight to not bring that on themselves. Anyway, hey, hey, look here. Elijah the reality, Mitchell. The reality situation is uh they've gotten the Two more Super Bowls without Aaron Rodgers. That's a great point. Um, I'm glad. I thought you were going to say, I'm just thankful they drafted Trey Lance because there was a lot of Aaron Rodgers talk on draft day too. That another good point. That's another good one. I'm glad that that trigger didn't get pulled. So um, (laughs) anyways, um, (laughs) Elijah Mitchell. Focus, buddy. I got you. Here we go. I got it. I'm back. I'm back. Ready? Elijah Mitchell. In three, Three, two, two, one. All right, Elijah Mitchell. Uh, I don't know about the future, but he is the guy right now. So he leads the team with 81 carries. The next highest carry total on the team is Trey Sermon, who had 29 carries. He has 31, and 29 of them came in the two weeks that Elijah Mitchell was out. 
Mm. Like he's it's tr- it's Elijah Mitchell and it's going to be Jamichael Hasty on third down. But Hasty, I think, has 12 carries this season. So he's the guy. He's super effective in their system. I don't know what the deal is with Trey Sermon. Um, I don't know why they don't like him. Like they drafted him <laughs> in the third round. I don't know what the deal is. But um, Jeff Wilson Jr. is supposed to be coming back. So maybe we see that cut into Elijah Mitchell's carries a little bit because he already has a shoulder issue. And then he's dealing with a rib issue this week. So I think they probably want to cut back on his carries a little bit, um, but he's going to be the guy. I think he's going to be the 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 number one running back for sure. Um, he's had 17 or more carries in four games, which is uh, he's played five. And in four of them, he's had 17 or more carries. Um, that's as many as Raheem Mostert has in his career. Mm. Um, so this is like a different level of usage that he's getting. And I think it's because he is so effective. And in real quick, because I, I want to ask about Elijah Mitchell, but I have to address something that's going on in the chat because people didn't like the fact that I said that the 49ers have gone to three Super Bowls and Aaron Rodgers has only gone to one. And they Look go, the well, they go, well, uh, well, how many have the 49ers won since Aaron Rodgers? You're right. Aaron Rodgers has won one. 49ers have won any. They haven't won any. The problem is if the Bears wouldn't have choked away the NFC Championship game, like they choke away pretty much everything, he probably wouldn't have gone to that Super Bowl. But we we left it. We left the fate of the world in the hands of the Bears, and they failed us like they do all the time. But that's uh, neither here nor there. Now, Elijah, you really winning over the Bears fans in the chat. <laughs> I'm just uh, I'm just pointing out facts. They were at home NFC Championship game. Let this guy Aaron Rodgers run all over him while Jay Cutler was riding a, 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 a electric bike or. A, a, What's the exercise bike? What and smoking a cigarette on the sidelines? But that that once again, that's the other one there. Elijah Mitchell. This guy's a lot mm. better than I thought he would. You know, like I, I I had my reservations after the Detroit game because he played well, but I was like, come on, guys! Like it was one game. He, but when he's out there and he's healthy, he tends to do pretty much the same thing every time he gets the opportunity. He does a great job of hitting these holes. Um, he runs the Shanahan. Bobby Turner running game the way it's supposed to be ran. And I think that's kind of the difference between him and Trey Sermon right now is he has an understanding of, of what that system is and he executes it in a, on a high, high level. So when they drafted him, I thought he could play the Raheem Mostert role and Raheem Mostert is in the last year of his contract. And it was like, oh, they have a guy that can just replace him because he offers a pretty unique skill set like you laid out. Um, I've been calling him Kirkland brand Raheem Mostert <laughs> for, for most since, since week one. Um, we are six, just for clarification. You're a huge Kirkland fan. Love Kirkland. That is a compliment. Um, but we are six, maybe seven games away from Raheem Mostert being Kirkland brand, Elijah Mitchell. Oh my. Um, <laughs> yeah, dude. Like, <laughs> it, it, like what Mitchell's doing is, is a unexpected, but B, like I said, the volume is just, is, is so much more valuable than what Mostert was doing. You know, Mostert was like nine, 10, 11 carries a game, you know, save for the NFC championship game and a, and a couple outliers, but he was in that, he was in that 11 or 12 carries and he's going to pop and he's a home run threat. But I think Elijah Mitchell is going to blend really nicely at 15 to 20 carries a game, but he's also going to hit that, that 4.8, five, five and a half yard average mm-hmm. and, and also be that home run threat. I still think we should see a couple of Trey Sermon carries. I mean, my goodness, you can't yeah, run like, the field a couple of times. Man, goodness man, gracious. Get, my man can't get a touch. <laughs> Come on. Yeah. May have missed on that one when I was proclaiming him the future RB one of the San Francisco 49ers. Uh, I predicted is- he would lead the team in, carries so <laughs> no i was i was with you i had half of it right i said most it won't last long trey sermon will take over um the, actually the, if we just tech the tape maybe i said elijah mitchell but but look but i definitely did yeah well definitely he definitely said did. elijah mitchell the interesting thing about that not to cut you off damien is like the preseason i didn't like the way trey sermon looked mm-hmm. but the times he's ran the ball in the regular season it seemed like he's improved like he's been okay but he just can't get any touches. Like, and I, I feel, you know, in between the tackles, maybe that's where he's at right now. You could run a couple, three, four times in a game in between the tackles with Trey Sermon. I don't see what the issue would be with that. You do it with Michael. I have, I have no, I, I have literally no idea. 
I would love to, it's one of those things where I would love to sit down with Kyle Shanahan and be like, I want 30 minutes of your time. Take me through the practice tape of why Trey Sermon cannot get Uno touch. One. He can't get and, one carry. And could you forward me the film of <laughs> you and Brandon Ayuk having words? Because I'm so <laughs> curious what that line meant. Like what, what, because Brandon Ayuk said him and Kyle Shanahan, I, th- I think that was the direct quote. They had words and that catapulted Brandon Ayuk's re- return to being the guy. Like, I, I would like to see that film. Had, Show me like, how that right, worked. Because, Do you because need to have words, words with Trey Sermon too? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just do the Trey Sermon, the, do the Brandon Ayuk bit with Trey Sermon. Right. Um, Absolutely. Yeah, I don't, I, it, man, I don't, if, if Brandon Ayuk's going to figure it out, though, that's a big deal for the Niners. Like mm. that's Muhammad Sanu touches in 2021 or not. Ooh. The move. Ooh. Just, How, is, not. is Debo going on Sunday? Yeah, I think so. I'm a little concerned, though, because they keep doing this this thing and and chris biederman my my co-host at candlestick chronicles pointed this out on twitter it's like um (laughs) (laughs) uh this guy i host a podcast with pointed out on twitter um that the niners keep doing this thing this year where they're managing injuries and they're like yeah we're gonna manage george kittle's injury oh george kittle's going on ir like (laughs) oh we're gonna manage debo samuel's injury oh it got worse during the game like what man like stop doing that like sit him for a game i would rather lose debo samuel for a game and then have him back for the long term than like yeah we're gonna manage it for a while and if it gets bad yeah we'll throw him on ir for three games it's just such a bad it's such a bad way to navigate injury situations and it seems like that's like their go-to move this year is Mm. we'll try and manage it and if not then we'll throw him on ir for three games and that just that's not a sustainable way to function they never manage it the right way right now. What's going on? But um, real quick, Kyle, before you get out of here, Sunday, big game. I mean, a big I look, I, key word for me all week has been opportunity. And maybe you don't have an opportunity to get back into the NFC West divisional race, but you have an opportunity to get some good wins and, and you know, get some good momentum to try and get into the playoffs. The Niners got what it takes with some of these guys coming back to uh, to, to get the Cardinals coming off a 10 days rest. They should like even a hobbled Kyler Murray is way easier to defend than a fully healthy Kyler Murray. Same thing with Deandre Hopkins. Like they should, if they're and this is the thing, if they're going to a playoff team, they need to win this game. Hmm. It's, it's a seven and one Cardinals team coming off a bad loss. Yeah. They've had the extra rest, but Kyler Murray didn't practice at all this week, which to me says he's not going to play. I can't imagine you would have your quarterback do zero practice and then put him in a game. Um, and even if he is, he's going to be what 60% of himself is dealing with an ankle injury yeah. and the Niners did a pretty good job containing him in Arizona. So the Niners should win this one. Like, like if they're, if they are a playoff team, which they might be, they should win this one like 31 20 type of thing. Oh, wow. Um, mm. But if they, but if they go in and they struggle and it's kind of like it was in Arizona and even if they pull out a win, um, they, they need the W, but as far as projecting long-term what the win means, I think they need to win uh, semi-convincingly. Kyle to have it decisive really decisive victories. Yeah. yeah often- if it's going to matter like, oh yeah, hey, this is a playoff team and they're playing a banged up Cardinals team or Colt McCoy, like, yeah, you got to win that by a couple you gotta, scores. You got to you Colt if you sneak by, If you sneak good. by that team, it's like, okay, yeah, so you've beaten the Bears and a, a banged up Cardinals team, like go beat somebody for real. But if you kind of uh like i said you win that one by a couple scores you feel a lot better about it kyle matson is the bcs you heard it right there uh (laughs) style points baby there it is we appreciate you joining us kyle matson prince of niners wire niners wire.com 95 7 the game in san francisco and of course uh the great candlestick chronicles uh podcast